Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to The Toast. I am thrilled. I am excited. I'm a little scared. Really? You, like, to me, are a, like, an anomaly. Like, you really, you're very intimidating. That is the nicest thing anyone has ever said to me. You I really think appreciate that's nice. that. That's so funny. That's really sweet. It's Jackie Schimmel. I've replaced Jackie Ashray with Jackie Schimmel. I'm feeling very comfortable, very excited. A toast virgin. I am. And let me tell you, my girlfriends are very excited about this. Really? Oh, yeah. I've got some toasty, toasty girls. I love that. Yeah, they're very excited. You're kind of like the reigning LA queen of podcasting. So I think I'm the self titled New York queen of podcasting. 1000%. So it's nice to kind of have a bi coastal moment. And you know what's really fun about us is that I feel like people in those sad, toxic Facebook groups mm-hmm. have pitted us against each other for years. Oh, really? And always thought that we had beef. Oh, like I've no. heard that before. Before. Oh, I was talking. I was on Taylor Strecker's show, and she was talking about how people thought you had beef with Taylor Strecker, right? Yeah, I loved that so much. I fucking love Taylor Strecker. Me too. I love her. Well, we don't have beef. We've only met one time. Oh my god! When we spent that weekend together, which was fabulous. It was. I mean, maybe fabulous for you. It's very triggering for me. Why? Okay, that influencer retreat, my one and only influencer retreat. I was really only invited because I think that I was like a conduit for other more influential people to come. That's interesting. I was only invited literally the day before. Someone must have dropped out. Someone dropped out. They were like, do you want to go to LA tomorrow? I'm like, no. They're like, well, you're being paid. I'm like, I'll be there. Let me know when. 100%. Let's go. So I got like Heather there. I got Heather McMahon there. And then I got Morgan Stewart there. So you were very much like the the communications person. Yes. And I had the worst room in the whole spot. Oh my God. (laughs) That's funny. It's true. It was like by the custodial closet. And you know, know part of the thing when you go there is you're supposed to you know tag the brand yeah. and all the things I had never done this before um, I was kicked off Instagram three hours into that weekend oh I do remember that now for calling you and Morgan sluts. and Heather McMahon whores whores yes you know what it's dirty all coming whores. back to me now mm-hmm. I will say I know there are a lot of um like influencer trips that happened to be a particularly fabulous one that was to die for it was at the nobu hotel in malibu which is like this gorgeous like 12 room hotel yeah invite only i stayed in a closet but yes (laughs) the toilets were toto i was really hungover and i threw up in the toto (gasps) did you we had like a private dinner at nobu it was really fabulous so fun and a fabulous group like you said morgan stewart heather me and you lauren elizabeth like it was a gorgeous crew it was a gorgeous crew so it was the first time we met yeah and then we like became instagram friends yes but we haven't met or hung out since then so when i was coming to la i was like I gotta get that bitch on the podcast oh I'm so glad you did we have so much in common I think so too let me tell you why we okay. both we both like not ironically released music totally I mean I'm always like semi ironically but that's okay mine was completely serious which is incredibly sad <laughs> <laughs> that is to die for I do do you love to sing no I mean I'm a terrible <laughs> singer but, but I just thought it would be funny you know, peak coronavirus yeah. lockdown, living for nothing. Yeah. Why don't I drop a pop song? Like to me, I look at your life and I would do anything to be married to someone who's like a professional music producer, right? That's his job title. Yes. And he like has a full blown like music studio. Like, yes. I, you would never get me out of that studio. I would make my husband make me songs. Like I w- it would be 24 seven nonstop. But like the problem with my husband is mm-hmm. that he won't. Oh, Like, he is so intimidated by my musical prowess. Mm, That's understandable. That, I mean, I have begged. Really? Begged. I think I'm dropping a Hanukkah bop this year. I love that idea. Let me know if you need a feature. I will literally come to your house. (laughs) Perfect. Fly to LA. I will do it 100%. Like a rap feature? or like I I don't give a shit. Like, I just... Whenever I do like um, shows, I do comedy shows, and I'm about to go on stage. Every single time, I think to myself, I would so much rather be on the stage for singing. Like I love to <sighs> sing. Oh my god! See, I don't love to sing, but I love the idea of being a pop star, mm. and yes, I feel like course. I would fucking sell the shit out of it. You would. Am I allowed to cuss on here? It is encouraged. Thank God. I mean, do you I- curse on your? Butt? podcast no never <laughs> yes every other word is fuck it's terrible it's you awful. are so funny so i feel like we have a lot in common our love of music yes your name being jackie like i just feel in like a kindred spirit sisterly yeah and you just had a baby and i obviously don't have any children but i like do you a- want mine no <laughs> no he's kind of cute but he's very real annoying cute. but i like appropriate mom culture because i i literally think i know everything about motherhood because of jackie and my sister olivia you probably um, do no i know i know more than the average 
woman who doesn't have children. Okay. And so you're fresh, fresh out of uh, motherhood, <sighs> childbirth. How I'm, you doing? I'm okay. I'm yeah. doing good. Yesterday we had a beautiful day together. Mm-hmm. The day before, um, we did do a drive by of the local orphanage in Calabasas. Understood. I know exactly where it is. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking about getting like the Google Maps from our house to the orphanage framed Love. gallery wall. As a reminder. In his nursery. Because there are days where I'm like, I severely regret this decision. Really? Yeah. You're if basic- I'm being honest. No, that's I I have like a, a very complicated thought process and relationship. Yeah. Having, I definitely want to have children. It's just like a matter of when, not if. Yes. And I have a lot of anxiety about it, especially about the pregnancy. So I know you had like a similar journey. So hearing you being refreshingly honest is really, it's comforting. It is. I will tell you, I was so petrified of being pregnant, like more so than anything in the entire world I could think of. Yeah. And I don't know, but mine was really lovely. Fine. Like I almost, I regret saying this, um, enjoyed it. No, that like to me makes me sick because to me you're like similar to me and our extreme thoughts on it. Yeah. So to hear you say that brings enormous comfort to someone like me for real. And I think maybe yeah. a lot of people listening who are at the same age where it's like they're married and you know they know they want to have kids. But like right now, I don't know. I know. I felt that way. I'm like, what's the rush? Like my life is fucking awesome. And no. then I was just prolonging it, prolonging it. And finally, one month, I decided to placate that bastard. And then boom, here we are. Here we are. Mother of the year. And your son's name is Clyde, which is so cute and different. I love Jackie's obsessed with like baby names, especially for boys. It's very hard. So hard. What's the meaning? Well, we didn't have one at the beginning. Mm -hmm. We just like kind of thought it was cute. And then we found out that it was a family name and a famous lion tamer's name, Mm. which is like feels very Leo, Leo adjacent. And his middle name is Lion, Clyde Lion. Oh, that's so nice. Kind of rock starry. Motherhood really does suit you. You think? I do. You should see me out in the wild with the kid. You wouldn't say that. I'm like, can you please? And I'm like burping him and his like limbs are flailing everywhere and he can't lift his head up not a big tummy time gal but you're working also, on it oh tummy time is warfare i like when i see it i'm like this is brutal it's awful neglect like it's so sad it feels so wrong and i just it does. i just avoid it at all costs so he's kind of like wobbly in the neck but we're getting there he'll figure it out yeah i think so you're a working mom you are so busy and you were still gracious enough to bring me a gift here today yes and i mean it's a gift but it's also a threat Kind of. Here's the thing. I want to be very clear on your platform that I am not an Air One girly. Mm-hmm. Like, I am not someone... It's not part of my, like, genetic makeup. It's not a personality, personality trait yeah. for me. It's just convenient. I'm a suburban Air One girl that's very different than the oh. West Hollywood Air One oh. girls. You know, uh, I get in. I like the buffalo cauliflower. Sue me. So I watch your Instagram stories, and you're always eating in your car. I love it. And that's what you're eating? Sometimes. I would say once to twice a week, you will hmm. find me at the Calabasas Air One, sitting in the parking lot, eating by myself. I saw Beverly Mitchell there this morning. Wow, Seventh you, Heaven Queen. You don't understand. I started, like, my eyes started twitching, right. and I started full body sweats, uh-huh. and I was just patrolling the aisles with our smoothies, trying to make eye contact. She could have a restraining order against me. For I have sure. a deep fixation Wait, with Beverly I have, Mitchell. I have a deep fixation on Seventh Heaven. Like that show was so toxic. Was not okay in any way. And one of my favorite TikTokers, his name is Rob. He watches old episodes and then does like a two minute recap of how insane. There's an episode where Jessica Beale gets hooked. God on- bless her. <laughs> she gets like addicted to like natural health supplements that give her energy. And she's on the basketball team and she's like up at six a.m. like basketballing till six p.m. Just like an- sweating out on the court yeah, on yeah. her drugs. And they're acting like she's literally doing blow. And all the um the pastor dad has to like sit her down and take her to rehab. It's so stupid. I think I need to start Seventh Heaven over again. I think you do. Because I missed it. I think you do. But, but you didn't I- watch it as a kid? Here and there, Oof. I was more of a Melrose Place girl. Oh, interesting. I was definitely more of a Seventh Heaven, even though like I grew up in like a deeply proud Jewish family. Like we were yeah. all watching Seventh Heaven. You, well, it probably only reinforced the Judaism. To be totally honest, it was it was honestly a show that showed showcased allyship, but it's truest form. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I love Beverly Mitchell. I don't know I'm why. I'm so happy for you. She has like this beautifully jovial, broken energy on Instagram. There's an innocence there, but also a darkness. Hundred <laughs> percent. I mean, she was on Seventh Heaven, so I know it's only right. She just counts down those days till Jessica Biel's birthday. As someone so who cute. lives in LA in like a, a cool neighborhood, do you see a lot of celebrities? I do. You do. 
Yeah. I mean, I live in Kardashian land, right. essentially. So there is a lot of Kardashian run-ins. I mean, Beverly Mitchell, for me, tops the of tier course. of celebrity run-ins. But I wouldn't say that I'm, yeah, I'm not like a mover and a shaker like that. Right. You but you're definitely mean? not the type of person <laughs> to like go up and ask someone for a photo. I... You're not. Claudia. You're I not. would never. I know, Although, okay. <laughs> I would stalk Beverly Mitchell at Air One. And you did. If I had more time, traffic was building, mm-hmm. I would have followed her. I know you would. Through every fucking aisle. And I did wait outside on the curb just to see, because I knew that white Yukon was hers. I could feel it. Did you take a photo, like a stalker photo, lurking <laughs> in the back? Or no photos? No, I did, for sure. Okay, you'll show me later. Yeah, I'll show you later. I was like, oh my God, Beverly Mitchell's here. Beverly Mitchell's here. But, like, foaming up That's the That's huge. It's a really big deal for me. No, I could I cry. It. No, you could do a whole podcast episode about it. <laughs> I will. So you went to Erewhon for yourself, and you were gracious enough to be like, hey, Dirty, I'm going to Erewhon. Do you want anything? Not mm-hmm. knowing I had never been. It's so not me. Like, everything I stand for is the antithesis of Air Hawan, you know? My favorite thing about you mm-hmm. thus far is that when we were at said Vital Proteins... Oh, influencer I don't do trip? free plugs, but there you go. Ooh. When we were at the um, influencer retreat, they were really hawking wellness, supplements, yes. green juice. Yes. And we were not there for that. No, we ordered McDonald's from across the street. Fun fact, there is a McDonald's across the street from this, like, number one hotel in the entire world. Yeah, and a beachfront McDonald's. We ordered it. Uh-huh. And the staff at the Nobu Hotel was kind enough to plate it for us. <laughs> but you spearheaded the movement. I mean, of course, I'm a human being. Like, I, I was need like, to eat. How the fuck did we get chicken nuggets? On a plate. On a plate. And a Diet Coke. In a glass. In a fucking glass at this Nobu Hotel. Listen, I was a woman with a dream. And you sought it through, and I just, I can't thank you enough. So you've brought me here a smoothie. So Erewhon is like a grocery store here in LA, for those who don't know. And they're known for like their juice bar, kind of. All of the things. The smoothies are probably the main focus. The main event. You know, the $300 stupid ass smoothies. No, how much was this? I'll Venmo you. (laughs) Never. Um, I believe it was $19. (gasps) I don't believe you. Which is probably on the... That's like the medium level price of an Air One smoothie. I ordered one one time. I started doing substitutes. They're like, it's $32. I'm like, you can go fuck yourself. And is this considered like a meal replacement? I don't think so. People in LA really need to get a grip, like a $20. So, and it's what's it? You told me this is, so they do like celebrity collabs all the Hailey time. Hailey Bieber has one. This that, is the Hailey Bieber one. That is the Hailey Bieber smoothie. I have not personally tried this one. So, you're what's kind in of it? strawberries. Strawberries. There's like a coconut cloud thing, collagen. I have no idea. Breast milk. No, literally. Probably. All right, I'm going to try it. Okay. And this is absolutely not a statement on Hailey Bieber herself. No, no. It's just, we all know I don't really, like, eat stuff like this. So, let's mm-hmm. go. Mm-hmm. Okay. Tasting notes. No. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. Okay. But in no universe is this good. Okay. Is in it, no universe is this worth $19, let alone $1. Wait, like, w- why? Is it too sweet? Is it not sweet enough? So, like, milky. I feel like I'm, like, sucking on an udder. I don't like that. It's really, um... It's fucking weird. Is it like milkshake adjacent? I, if it was milkshake adjacent, it'd be finished. Okay. It's gross. Like, I, I really can't describe it. Let me take one more. But also, let me say, it does taste like strawberries. Oh, well, I would fucking hope so. You know, like, it is growing on me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if it's the taste that's growing on me or just, like, the label. Like, I'm just an Erewhon girly. I'm skinny. I mean, you, you look know? cute. Yeah, no, with, like, my nude ensemble, my Chanel shoes, my Erewhon. You can't tell me shit right now. No, you can't. So while I'm not loving the taste, I am loving the sense of superiority it brings upon. Yeah. You know? Do you feel like a veil has just been like lifted and yeah. you're just lighter and it's giving like holier than thou energy. Like I'm mm. better than everyone because I eat Erewhon. I'm intimidated by you now holding right? your fucking Erewhon smoothie. Without the Erewhon smoothie, there's nothing even remotely intimidating about Disagree, me. Disagree, Claudia. Really? Disagree. I think that um, when I was fat, <laughs> there. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. Um, I think that people were more intimidated by me. I think that's like a thing people feel that like you're like aggressive. I am so non-confrontational. I'm lovely. Lovely. I think I am. I really am. But I do. People do tell me I'm like scary, but I'm really not. No, I mean, I feel that way about myself. I say all the time I'm low-key lovely and nobody believes it. But if I keep saying it, I hope it's true. But do you really believe it? Yes. You are lovely, but you are scary. That's so nice. I think it's a good thing. That means like you're accomplished or just like an evil bitch. Well, 
Potentially, yes. Potentially. But Potentially. we'll see. I don't think so. So you're going to join me today for the past five stories. Can't wait. What are you currently like fixating on in pop culture? Okay. I know you love Bravo. Are you watching new Housewives of New York? I am. I am as well. Now, I'm I'm disgruntled Explain. as a viewer. So I live for Vintage Roni. Mm. Like there is nothing better in the universe. I agree than vintage Roni. And I think that like in the past few years, we all decided that these women need to be our role models and like beacons of the community. Yeah. And that's not why we watch The Real Housewives. Very true. We want them broken, damaged, toxic, drinking. drinking. No, that's so fair. And it's not lovely, but it is true. Yeah, no, I was definitely critical of like the final seasons of the OG because it was just everyone drinking so much, having these blowout fights and not remembering it the next morning. So it was hard to follow. That's true. Yeah, I live for like the golden years of Roni, like the early seasons. I like... Is that a buffalo coming down the stairs? Oh, Alex McCord. I think about her and her rosacea flare-ups every single day of my life. I think about her and her newfound happiness and life in Australia as a psychologist. I think about... To me... That is proof that like you can come out of anything. Totally. And if Alex McCord was on Real Housewives of New York right now and all of this was happening, she would have been the cool, like they wouldn't have been able to get away with what they got away with. They literally just disliked her immediately because she lived in Brooklyn. And had like unrenovated baseboards. Well, I I think it was a little bit more than unrenovated. Her and her family were like, we're living in a war zone. (laughs) It was insane. During COVID, I remembered that. And then during COVID, I went back and rewatched Real Housewives of New York. And the townhouse was worse than I remembered. Like it was, and when Jill goes to visit and she sees how they're living for the first time, like she's horrified. Horrified. And they're like bunk beds. With like this, the plastic storage bins under the bunk beds with all their clothing. And then the grand reveal of the like (laughs) Moulin Rouge, like red crushed velvet, like black. I'm like, what the fuck happened? And we we actually do have a lot in common with Simon Van Kampen because he too released a song. I know. I am real. Uh, He is real. He was real for that. Fucking red Red, pants. Think about him every single day. So in the terms of the new Roni, like what's your general take? I'm two episodes behind, but I'm pretty, I'm I'm in the know. I've done a full 180 on Jessel. You and everybody else. I know. I love that I'm like on the face of that movement. (laughs) She just, Rolling Stone just did a huge um, feature on her. She looked fabulous. I mean, justice for Jessel. I agree. Because I went into that season and I was like, this bitch and her husband and this. She was trying so hard with everyone too hard but then i mean i think it speaks to human nature and just like kind goodness a hundred percent that we all ended up rallying together and rooting for her because she's not a bad person she, no it, her biggest crime was just like wanting to be liked too much and that made her come off unlikable ironically right, right. but she really she's a nice girl and she doesn't like come for people and she doesn't really start stuff she mm-hmm. just had a hard time you know showing us who she really is yeah and now we see her and we love and we celebrate her yes and what's his face Pavit? Pavit. the mileage run thing to me is so funny because my sister margo did a mileage run like last december like a year ago to yeah. boston uh-huh. she, she needed like a hundred more miles like something so small sure you couldn't buy it you had to be on a flight so she's texting us like hey guys i'm literally headed to the airport i'm going to boston i'm like excuse me we made fun of her <laughs> and listen we still talk about it my sister every time jackie sees my sister margo she goes i think i'll go to boston <laughs> it was the weirdest fucking thing but i understand it like i'm a big miles girl myself like yeah. i totally get it but like it was weird totally weird to vietnam it's weird it's weird but it's not a crime no, it's not a crime. And they, I appreciate them. Okay. So the new season, it's not giving me what I expect from Roni. Mm-hmm. It's fine. It's different. It's different. I partake. I'm very into Jenna Lyons. You are. That was going to be my next question. I'm really not. I don't know why. She gives it nothing. Like no energy. I think I just like the outfits. Yes. The house. And the house. Yes. That's it. I do like certain elements of her but like as a housewife she's not cutting it like we wouldn't expect this from any she gets special treatment she 100 percent does and maybe i like that dynamic too for sure it's fucked up it is fucked up it's totally fucked up i think season two will be more interesting do you think they're going to keep everyone because jenna lyons was just on watch robin's live and her tone and andy's tone as well was very much like conclusive like this was a fun thing that we did really it didn't feel like there was a lot of potential for a future and she's very publicly like alienated herself from the bravo world she hates to be like 
referred to as a housewife because I get she's accomplished other things but understandable but like current era you're on Roni so just lean in sweet embrace embrace it um that would be I would be upset if they didn't bring it back for a season two I think everybody deserves a season two I'm sorry they were talking about like just Jenna not coming back not the entire show okay okay It, it sounded like Jenna's journey was over it might be but I would like to see her come back yeah it's a good group there's potential I'll say that there's potential and I think season one they're being nice they're doing the thing they're integrating and then I think season two will really see like maybe everything some, some more deeper relationships then shit will pop off we have five stories they're actually all really good stories sometimes so when we wake up it's just like we're talking about the dumbest shit and we just we have to try yeah. today we don't have to try because you know things are popping off yes and I think it's because I'm in LA so technically I'm like three hours behind I would be recording 9 a.m New York time so I have more time to find stories and there's a lot of things going on so I think I'm gonna dive in if that's okay with you Jackie Shimmel please so Jackie Shimmel before we start I just have one question mm-hmm. are you ready for the past five stories that you need to know Yes. Today's episode of The Toast is brought to you by Lululemon. Lululemon knows that it's sweat a weather. We're all wearing our finest leggings, and the only place to go for leggings, we all also know, is Lululemon. So they have so many different fabulous pairs of leggings, whatever your leggings needs are. So if you're like super active, girly, running around town, jogging and stuff, check out the Fast and Free leggings. They're powered by the New Lux fabric. They provide a weightless on-body sensation and incredible coverage. They're designed for those looking for a legging that gives them complete freedom from distractions while running and jogging. They also have the Wonder Train leggings, which are designed with one of Lululemon's most innovative fabrics, the Everlux fabric. It's also their fastest drying fabric because, you know, you're working out, and then you got errands to run. We don't want to be walking around with a moist crotch. It's not nice. And Lululemon totally understands that. The Wonder Train leggings allow you to work hard and feel dry. So you can effortlessly transition from sweat to street. And then there's the Align leggings, which are my personal favorite. I happen to just love the entire Align collection from Lululemon. They're powered by the Nulu fabric. They're designed for the person who wants a lightweight, low compression yoga solution that is also versatile enough for casual wear. Because I wear leggings everywhere, on the plane, to the grocery store, but also obviously when I'm being active. So it, giving, it gives the wearer a next to nothing body sensation it's full freedom of movement and it doesn't restrict or compress the wearer in any way it's great for low intensity workouts like yoga or like i said just casual wear which is the best type of wear in my opinion so get into the lululemon leggings it's that time of year indulge have a good time go to lululemon.com that's l-u-l-u lemon.com to get into the lululemon leggings today's episode is also brought to you by bolin branch if your sleep wasn't an absolute dream then you have to upgrade to the softest most luxurious sheets from bolin branch these sheets will immediately change your sleep they feel very breathable they're luxuriously soft and they get softer with every wash they're made from the finest 100% organic cottons on earth and you'll feel the difference for years to come so if I'm looking a little raggedy it's because I'm staying at a hotel and I didn't have my bowl and brand sheets and I've been sleeping in my bowl and brand sheets for years Jackie has too when I go to Jackie's house I sleep so well because I know I'm getting the bowl and branch situation so bowl and branch products are made differently they are made so you can sleep better at night from the rarest 100% organic cotton on earth it's free from toxics toxins synthetic pesticides and harsh chemicals at every step of their making so the the sheets that I have and I know that Jackie has too is the signature hemmed sheets they're uh come in a bunch of different designs and colors for every bedroom style and mattress size and best of all Bolin Branch is giving you a 30 night worry free guarantee with free shipping and returns on all orders they also have a gift box their signature sheets come wrapped and ready in a beautiful holiday gift box because that time of year is upon us and if you want to get ahead of that Head to Bowling Branch. So give your loved ones a better night's sleep this holiday season. Get 20% off your first order plus free shipping when you use promo code TOAST at bowlandbranch.com. That's bowl and branch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D, branch.com. Promo code TOAST. It's limited time only and exclusions do apply. So take my advice because I'm kind of an expert on all things laying down. You know, that's kind of my my area of expertise and I recommend Bowl and Branch and I have never steered you wrong. All right, first up, Brittany's memoir is is out okay it's and, out uh i don't know i spoke too soon Hold okay on. whatever it's fine well there are all these stories coming out so either the it's out or the excerpts are out you know they they pitch the the pr things gotcha and she's talking about the infamous uh head shaving moment and she's revealing why she shaved her head in 2007 so after 16 years britney spears has finally revealed why she infamously cut off all of her hair uh, ahead of her conservatorship she had said in her book i'd been eyeballed so much growing up i'd been looked up and down and had people telling me that they thought what they thought of my body since i was a teenager shaving my head and acting out were my ways of pushing back However, Brittany notes that once her father, Jamie Spears, took control of her personal medical and financial affairs in 2008, she no longer had a say in her day-to-day life. She said, I was made to understand that those days were over now. I had to grow up my hair, get back into shape. I had to go to bed early and take whatever medication they told me to take. So this isn't necessarily a bombshell. I think we all 
if we had to, you know, think about it hard enough, we would have predicted like this right. was her taking control of her body when so many things were out of her control. Sure, sure. Kind of like that episode of Lizzie McGuire where, where Miranda stops eating and she says, you know, my parents are getting divorced. So much is out of control. But like my, the food and my weight is what I can control. One thousand percent. So I, I reson that resonated as a child of divorce with me. I will say that I have had many moments where I felt like shaving my own head. Of course. It's so understandable. Like, I, here and there, I'm like, if I just had a buzzer, I'd pull a fucking Britney. I do often think about, for, more so for convenience. <laughs> totally. Like, if I was a man, oh my God, I would be the happiest man alive. Totally. Oh my God, just free flowing in the wind. I, or, and I, I just, I could never be a woman who doesn't care about her hair because that's, why do I have to be so extreme? I don't have to become a man. I just don't have to do my hair. Sure. I can't. I can't. I can't. My hair is my everything. It's the most important thing in my life. It is my uh, trouble area. You have, oh, you know what? I love your saga on your um, Instagram about your hair. It's not great. You would never know that your natural hair is so different from this. You would die. So you would die. Is that your Jewish ancestry? Oh yeah, and it's popping up hard. It's very curly. It is coarse. It is curly. Coarse. It is similar to a Brillo pad mm. mixed with like a pipe cleaner. Mm, yes. Like if it was natural and I just like went like this, uh -huh. it would just stay. Stay up on its own. It would just fully stay. So do you do some sort of treatment for that? Just a lot of blow dries. Yeah. Just a lot of, you know grit yeah a lot yeah. of friction a lot of friction my question about britney mm -hmm. spears um i understand the shaving of the head you know she's taken back her control what's going on now with the hair that's an amazing question i do have to assume it's some sort of aftermath of being forced to be on drugs you didn't need for so many years but the extensions i'm yeah. well versed in the extension world do you wear extensions oh yeah oh, oh wow. she does pounds of them just pulling Clip up my scalp in or tape in i don't i've done them all uh currently a sew in wow. weft 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 hmm tracks. i like that lots tracks. of tracks got it yes britney's tracks are always showing always showing and i'm confused if there's like a bead, if there's a keratin bond, who who is doing this? That's the thing. I don't think anyone's doing it. You okay. know? Okay. If okay. I had to guess. Another big bombshell from the book that just came out is that she opened up that she and uh, Justin Timberlake, when they were together, she had gotten an abortion. <gasps> oh. She said uh, he wasn't ready to be a dad. Wow. Yeah. Okay, this is news to me. No, I did not hear this. So I think they're really limited in how they can promote Britney's book because she's not in any sort of condition to do a sit-down interview or go on the no. podcast round. She's no. not going to do smart lists. No. So did you see that they're releasing Crossroads in theaters? They're <gasps> re-releasing it? No. Isn't that a, like a, 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 as a promotional thing for her book? That is genius. And so I guess they're now releasing excerpts because they have to build hype for it, but they for really sure. can't. They can't stand her on the road. And Michelle Williams from... Um, everything i think of her from the greatest showman she dawson's creek yeah she, sure <laughs> she is um reading Was the audio book dawson's creek? i have no fucking <laughs> dawson's creek is another show that like similar to gilmore girls like is so my demographic in my era went completely over my head i never Same. got into it too woodsy for me i, I do think i would like gilmore <laughs> girls and i me and ben started to watch it like a year ago we watched the first episode and it cut to the theme song and ben started singing it i'm like how the fuck do you know this song? He's like, I used to watch a show a lot with my sister. I'm like, oh, okay, freak. Like, you, he knew everything already. I've never seen an episode. I had seen the first episode, and I'm sure it's good, but I just... I it's no seventh heaven. It's no seventh heaven, and I didn't stick with it. Yeah, it didn't pull you in. It didn't. But, um, so they're do Michelle Williams is doing the audiobook for it, because I guess Brittany also can't, like, you know, sit down. I recorded an audiobook. It's actually, like, a lot of work, and it's okay. horrible. Like, every time you mispronounce one word, you have to start from the beginning. It's horrible. Why does Michelle Williams need that gig? Why does She's Michelle Williams enough. need that gig? How do Michelle Williams and Britney Spears know one another? Is that just, like, an L.A. thing? I, maybe. It makes or no sense. Maybe they came up at the same time. Maybe. Another thing about the book that I just saw is that Christina Aguilera was on Jimmy Kimmel uh -huh. and Jimmy Kimmel asked if she thinks she's going to be in the book and she was like really weird about it making it seem like she hopes she's not because if it's in there like whatever's going to be in there wouldn't be good. Oh I love that. She was like really feeling awkward and Jimmy like wasn't letting it go. Even though I mean this is unpopular to say Britney Spears makes me a little nervous. For sure. Like, we're not supposed to say fair. that? No, I think you can. Uh, people get really upset about the Britney Spears of it all. It's a de it's a definitely a very delicate corner of the internet. And I, sure. I have never been a part of the Free Britney movement. Like, I believed in her freedom. I thought it was bad. You know, sure. But, but like, I, a little supervision is okay. Right. No, well, so now I, I think what we're seeing is, like, when she had, was put into a conservatorship, 
Um, maybe she wasn't a good candidate for it. Yeah. But the person we're seeing now, like, is actually the perfect candidate for a conservatorship, but she has so many bad actors around her. Who could you possibly trust with that sort of power? If you no couldn't one. even trust her own father. I will say that it gives me solace that she still has her travertine floors mm-hmm. and not marble. Yeah. Because it's a little slick. Well, and she's like always dancing around and sweating. She could slip and crack her, <laughs> fracture her skull. Like, But travertine has a uh, grip. I know you're remodeling your house, so you mm-hmm. know what travertine is. What the <laughs> fuck is travertine? <laughs> travertine is like, I'm really <laughs> fixated on this. Your it's, house is beautiful, by the way. Thank you. I love, I, I love all the content. Thank you so much. Travertine is that like beigey, bread colored, mm-hmm. kind of porous tile. Got it. Natural stone. So it's not slippery. It's not. It has some grit to it. Got it. Okay. It's good, it's good if you have like children running around. Yeah. Got it. So it's not or like that just shiny twirling. marble or tile. Yes. I understand. Okay. Very so that slick. That is good. That's very safe. Maybe that's why she's always dancing in that particular room. I think so. It's a good landing pad for her. I would prefer a carpet. That makes me feel a little bit better. I see their living room. It has a, a sunken in living room because there's two steps. That's dangerous too. Very dangerous. <laughs> there's actually been like a lot of brain news. Her oldest son also just turned 18. So oh. Kevin Federline is not qualified for it. Um, child support anymore for that first kid wow yeah they still have the other one but both you're kids- a real fucking journalist over there jesus I'm christ really not actually and i'm not even heavily like invested in the britney movement yeah my younger sister margo was like obsessed with britney i i wasn't like a big britney girl i just know because like i do the podcast right and it's like really sad but it also is very confusing it's super confusing because we all were like free britney free britney free britney and then we freed her and we were like oh my god yikes yeah what- and so now seriously like as from a a human perspective what do we do now kind of nothing right i guess we just buy the book and support totally because i think she also i'm when it comes to britney my the most interesting part for me is her finances i'm because i don't think she has a lot i don't think so either and like where did that money go and so like, many what's people happening? have their pockets in her hands i mean in her hands in their pocket oh my god i can't fucking speak had their hands in her pockets yeah for so many years that when she got out i think there was a lot less money and now she it's been like t- a year two years i don't even know she doesn't work Right. She takes a lot of trips on private jets. She has a big house. Like, those things add up. 100%. Security. Hopefully that Crossroads reboot brings some money in. Hopefully. I'll be there. 100%. That that movie left an indelible mark on me. I've started crimping my hair recently. Mm. And... Going back to your roots. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I'm regressing. And I feel like maybe that is unintentionally inspired by Crossroads Britney. Didn't she have somewhat of a crimp towards the end? When she got more, like, edgy and started performing in those clubs. (laughs) (laughs) She did sort of embrace, like, the inner edgy queen. Right. And she just kind of let it... And then she started dating that murderer. Right, yes. And Kim Cattrall turned her away from... Her yes. house in Arizona. That movie's amazing. My entire first comedy special is about that movie. I absolutely love that movie. And there's so many interesting like references, pop culture references mm-hmm. from that movie. Of course, Kim Cattrall, Taryn Manning, Zoe Saldana. I mean I mean, of course, Britney Spears. It's it should be studied. It's the best movie. I have not seen it in so long and I'm gonna rewatch it. I would totally we should go to the theaters and see it. I would love to. All right, are you ready for our next story? Some housewives yes. news. Like these are two people who aren't a part of the Housewives universe anymore. Mm-hmm whom I would literally lay my life out on the line for. Like, I am obsessed with the beer mints. Did you oh, watch Don't Be Tardy? Of course I did. Transfixed for the beer mints. That was, in my opinion, up there with the greatest of greats in terms of family. Like, I think of it as just as good as Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Like, family reality TV shows. They were grossly undermarketed. Yeah. They were railroaded and hoodwinked. Yep. But the fact that we got eight seasons of that show, I never missed a minute. It's and so And the final good. season when they were kind of like scrambling for viewership and they took an RV and like went obsessed. With the red cups. Love it. The, the red cups. And now in hindsight, so much of what we saw on that show, which we thought was funny, like Kim drinking a lot and gambling a lot and like pulling over the RV to go to this like turnt reservation where they could go gambling and she was at the slots. All of that was funny, but now... It's evidence. Right. They are, I think, getting divorced. What is going on? They were, and then they weren't. And I forgot where we left off. I think we left off that they weren't. Right. I thought maybe they were reconciling or they called off the divorce. Right. But she needed to go to a facility of some sort. And then there was like da- like a body cam footage when the police came into their home to break up like a domestic dispute. Yeah. And now they are selling their iconic georgia mansion for six million dollars on the heels of their financial woes so in similar to britney these were two people whose financial situation 
I was constantly thinking about every day. The net a porte delivery is the bangles, the, the bangles, the Christmas tree decorations. That was like Kardashian level. Oh yeah, the and cars, I, the cars for the kids too. It was wasn't adding up. The math no. wasn't mathing. No. So now they're selling their home. The estranged couple, according to page six. So I guess they aren't together. Yeah. They have been living together amid their divorce. Listed the two-story, seven-bedroom, 11-bathroom, brick-and-stone estate on Monday at almost double what it was listed for earlier this month. So the property was built. You know, you're into real estate now. Tell me if you think this is like a fair situation. Let me. The yeah. property was built in 2008. Okay. Features a heated pool, five fireplaces, a six-car garage, a full back in-law suite, a separated au pair suite, a circular driveway, a chef's kitchen, and an oversized island, a full bar. An oversized wa- island? Get out. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> a full-size bar, a wine cellar, multiple walk-in closets, an elevator, a finished basement, an in-ground trampoline, a billiards room, an arcade room, a movie theater, and a gym with private massage room. How many square feet? It actually did not say. Because, you know... That's important. It, You know what? It looks like a big mansion, but when you look at it, a lot of it is garage. I think it's important to note. So they bought it in 2012 for $880,000. I know this. That's insane. Okay, I know this because I've been crunching numbers. Okay. So if they bought it in, what, when did you say, 2007? 2008. 2008, okay. So that's like roughly, what, 16 almost years ago, 15 years ago? Mm-hmm. For $880,000, and he was working he was uh playing football at the time yes. and she was very much so employed yes no they were financially well back then so if they put the down payment let's call it 25 percent, they needed to come up with let's be generous generous 250 200 yeah okay Th- that means they only would owe 600 and something thousand dollars on the house over the last 15 years 15 years you don't need 18 matte black g-wagons and 84 cartier love bracelets it's true you need to pay your mortgage no it's true and you know what there was a high likelihood that they could have bought the house for cash right if he was in the nfl she was probably liquid from like instagram and real housewives yeah 800 they could have together come up with under a million dollars for sure and i wouldn't be surprised so now i mean how did they get the house so cheap and wasn't there a whole storyline on Real Houses of Atlanta that she rented her house? Yes. But that's Remember, not true. They called the cops. Yes. On the landlord. Yes. Yes. But then they were buying the house. They were leasing to buy. I don't really know. That feels slippery to, to me. To me, this whole situation is Housewives at its finest. 100%. Like a mansion that nobody knows where it came from. She by a Chateau Charay. Sh- the cops are showing up. I will say that also was one of my absolute favorite moments in Real Housewives of Atlanta when everyone's homes were like up for criticism and everyone's house, the Moore Manor, Chateau by Charay, when everyone's house had a name. The doormat. People the, were giving the, the doormat. Baseboards. Shit, baseboards. The not finished basins. To me, that was peak comedy. Like it really was. <laughs> it's so niche and it's so petty and it makes me so happy. Like the realist state shaming but i just want to say so they're selling this house for six million dollars they bought it for 880 they won't get six million no and uh, two months ago they were were listing it for three million that no no that doesn't I'm not familiar flag. with like the housing market in georgia i'm pretty sure it doesn't double in a month no it doesn't double in a month but but they, this was a good investment for them like they should make money on this house unless they owe so much on it they're not going to make right. anything right and right. it's just going to be collected by the Courts. I don't own a house, so I'm like very critical of people's, you know, finances and mortgages when I myself am a renter. Um, but I'm but just like the beauty of I'm this so whole young, situation. You know? I'm just like young, young, thin, fruitful, young, young girls. Like, don't buy houses. You, you drink know? Airwan smoothies. Exactly. I, mean, I love these two. Like, I will be mourning the loss of this marriage for years to come. I was shocked. Sh- I was devastated. Yeah. No. Do you remember Express Mile Atlanta? Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? No, I don't. It was that teeth whitening company that like the Beermans were always hawking. Yep. I like, like, yes. To me, the mystery Uh behind that whole company haunts me to this day. Yeah. Like where did they go? What happened? And and, like how many people's teeth fell out? Like I just. (laughs) I know. What were they just like? It was a light. It was like an LED light that you would like shove in your mouth. With some bleach. And they were with bleach. (laughs) They were always hawking that shit on Instagram. And what happened to like the skincare and the yeah. beauty boxes and the robes and the robes? Yeah, they had a few. They had kids clothing. They had kids clothing. It wasn't for lack of trying. They had an entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah, but something's got to stick. Yeah, no. And honestly, I think things like for the family really went downhill when Croy left the NFL. 
Yeah. Like he was like, oh, from he played in Atlanta forever and mm-hmm. he was like loved there and he wasn't amazing, but he was like a good steady player. Sure. And then he got transferred, whatever it's called, traded to yeah. the Bills in Buffalo. Look and at the, us talking sports. The family didn't go with him. They let him go to Buffalo by himself and they're like, well, let's see if this works out. And they dropped him. So he just came back to Atlanta. So it was a good thing they didn't move. Whew. Yeah, that was a dark time for the family, and I do think it was the beginning of the end. Yeah, I think so. I think you're right. Okay, our next story are uh, two people I'm just forced to keep talking about. I Every piece of information I receive about Jada and Will Smith is against my will. Like, yeah. I don't go searching for this. I know. But I will say, I chose this as a story, and then on my way here, I was scrolling TikTok, and I saw that she was on a podcast, and I think a lot of the news stories that have come out this last week are headlines from that podcast, mm-hmm. and she was crying, crying, crying. No days off for Jada. I, I want to say, like, I actually felt bad for her. Oh, really? Even though I'm so fatigued by this story, like, it didn't feel, I know she's, like, a, an actress by trade. It didn't feel like she was acting, but okay. apparently, they've been separated for seven years. So she's a book coming out. So okay. she's on a press tour, and that's why we're still every day. It's you know, more Jada, new more stuff. Will. So on paper, Jada Pinkett and Will Smith have been a Hollywood power couple for nearly twenty five years, but in real life, they apparently have haven't been an actual couple since twenty sixteen. Jada told this to Hoda Kotb. They did like a Today Show segment. So yeah. They, uh, excuse me, Dateline. So in a preview for that. The actress confirmed that she and Smith have been living completely separate lives for seven years. They are still married, but not romantically involved. Mm -hmm. Here's the exchange with Hoda. Hoda says, it was not a divorce on paper. Right. Mm -hmm. But it was a divorce. Jada. Divorce. Oh. Whoa. So asked what caused the marriage to fracture. She didn't answer explicitly, but she does say that when Chris Rock stormed the stage and Will said, leave my wife's name out your fucking mouth, she was shocked, quote, really shocked to hear Smith refer to her as his wife, considering they hadn't called each other husband and wife in a very long time. But they're there as a couple. Yeah. Keeping I, up appearances. No, Why are you there with him if you're not affili- if you're not identifying as his wife, even just for the sake of... But seven years... Yeah. She had that show, Red, Red Table, Table Talk, where she talked about marriage and family. She had the entanglement with that other guy, August. So was all that a lie? Like, wh- I'm so confused It by is this. a foundation built on bullshit. Now it we is. don't trust Jada. Now we or don't trust Will. the Red Table. No, no. The table was a place for people to come together. Oh, I watched. When Jordan Woods was on, I watched. I Same. watched when Olivia Jade was on. Same. There was a lot of iconic pop culture moments. And then they franchised the show. Gloria Estefan and her family, her mother and her daughter, got their own Red Table Talk. Is it still going? No, because Facebook Watch as a network has been canceled. Okay, got it. But they tried. Yeah. And I felt like, we, I feel we've all been duped yes. by the Red Table. Because every, every time there was a problem with the, with the Smith family, they took it to the table. Right. And it was like a place of honesty and transparency. Right. But you didn't want to say that you're not together for seven years? That's kind of a big one to hide, yeah. Jada. And I'm just fatigued. I'm exhausted by these people. Like, it's so not a story. It's a story that never ends. Never. And, and I hate, me and Jackie say this a lot. Like, when celebrities have multiple documentaries... Yeah, And they say, like, you know, the last documentary, that wasn't the real me. Like, I wasn't. So, I hate when people, like, do something and it's like, this is the truth. This is who I am. And then years later, they're like, actually, no, this is my truth. Yeah, now we don't trust you. You're abusing consumerism. You are. You are abusing consumerism. It's And that's rude. how I feel here. Same. Couldn't she, agree more. And her book um, is out. And so I Everyone think, go get a copy. <laughs> I think this is just the beginning. <laughs> right. Of stuff we're gonna hear but this was probably the biggest that's pretty wild it's also really wild that they cannot be spoken about without people bringing up the slap can i tell you something please andrew my husband's Mm -hmm. studio Mm -hmm. is shares a property line with the smith home wow yeah and when all this shit was going down there was helicopters oh my god i'm sure circling and he couldn't even like record because of the sounds blah 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 a producer's nightmare oh truly meanwhile pop star at home (laughs) couldn't you know finagle a song for me but that's okay um and they live so close Mm -hmm. and we i have never ever seen jada or will like they don't leave their little compound is it huge yes i wouldn't leave it either they never leave i wouldn't you never see them coming you never see them leaving what's so funny is very weird whenever they the family is in the press which is a lot there's a new wave of people who are just now putting together mm-hmm. that their children's being their children being named Willow and and Jaden 
uh-huh. is like a extrapolated version of Will, Jada, Willow, and Jaden. Yeah. People don't know that. That's very dumb. How do people not know that? I can't lie. Like, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know that either. <laughs> Like, people are so dumb. (laughs) I appreciate your honesty. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Honestly, these are two people I wish well. I just really wish I didn't have to hear about it. Like, there's a certain point with celebrity and and where you get to overexposure. And I feel like we got there a really long time ago. Yeah. Oh, we're done. With the entanglement thing and the red table. To me, that was like, this is far too much. Feel free to keep this to yourself. Like, we, we respect your privacy. Please keep it private. Yeah, keep it private. They refuse. It's so interesting when people reach that level of success wouldn't the ultimate form of luxury be dimming the lights closing the curtains like they don't need she they are they don't need money like they're good her memoir will do well sure she doesn't need to bleed out for it (sighs) they're good take the day off take the year off so when people are out here doing the most and they like need the money to pay their rent i respect it yeah tap dance honey if you're overexposing yourself with millions and millions and millions in the bank hundreds of millions yeah there's no excuse for that broken energy broken energy because this is a business i get that sure i respect it you don't need this no you don't need the relevance you don't need the kashish and honestly i feel like it works it works against her because I agree. every time people are like people get so fatigued by it they're like enough are they still scientologists were they i believe so i believe so oh unconfirmed allegedly what do i know i believe so i have a lot of thoughts on scientology so do i what are your thoughts not a fan no of course not i'm following this saga so it's so dumb but this is like my corner of the internet okay so there was a girl on tiktok who like ate weird foods and like she blew up because everybody was like what the fuck are you eating okay and then of course like ability is a prison they mm. found out she's a scientologist there you go and now it's like all the the love she had received is being you know sent in equal amounts of hate right and i actually feel bad for her but yeah, she is sucks. a scientologist <laughs> so, i mean it's kind of warranted it's just crazy when people, of course. when people who aren't celebrities are scientologists I, I can't believe it. How do you get involved? Maybe you're like trying to meet. So I, I don't understand. I really, you have to be in a very dark place. Who are like the most, obviously we know Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. We know formerly Leah Remini. Uh, what, what's a uh, Moss of. Elizabeth Han- Moss from um, Handmaid's Tale. That's a shocker. And in theory, I, it's hard for me because I love her in theory mm-hmm. as an actress. Yes. But now I don't trust her. I can't support it. I can't support her. It's so terrible and toxic when you love someone and then you find out they're a Scientologist. I'm out. I just found out someone was a Scientologist. But you know what? I need to start Googling things before I say them. So let me just. I just. Well, John Travolta, of course. He's also like a classic one. I feel like a lot of the the backlash against Scientology falls on the hands of Tom Cruise and John Travolta. Yes. Yeah, there were rumors. Okay. Okay. That Chloe Fineman from SNL was in Scientology. That would ruin my life. But, but. That would ruin my life. They're not confirmed. And this article from MSN says maybe she's not. I hope not. If she is, she needs she's to keep suspected. that. She's suspected. It's crazy how it's like <laughs> an investigation. A suspected, she's suspected to be a second generation Scientologist, meaning she was born into the church. I thought she was Jewish. I did too. Fineman? I would hope so. I would hope so. Oh, that's it's crazy. Good. Scientology is something I'll like never, I'll, I'll never not watch a documentary about. Me too. And I still don't get it. Me neither. Like the levels, the clear. The clear. What What do you mean clear? The clear. And what does that mean? When I go um, on, the last two times I've gone on tour, I go to the Tampa area. Okay. And there's a, um, a fabulous theater there in Clearwater. Okay. That I've played at twice. That's literally around the corner from the Scientology headquarters. Scientology is headquartered in Clearwater, Florida. The first time I went, which was in 2018, there was like a couple people on the street walking around in like flight attendant uniforms. And I was like, what's that? And people were like, oh, Scientology is based here. It's really weird. I went, came back a few years later. The town is completely, completely desolate. There are no people in town except the people who walk around in those uniforms. Oh my God. It's insane. Both times I went, I left that night. It's so freaky. And what's with the cruise ship? I what don't goes know. On, like what's with the cruise ship? I don't know. There's like a carnival cruise with Scientology. I don't get it. The levels, the clear, the L. Ron Hubbard of it all. So weird. It's fascinating. I know. I'm just like completely confused and transfixed. Like by I could it. understand because I'm like a person who's deeply, um, like I'm easily influenced. And if I was, you know, becoming famous and living in L. A. and all the other famous cool skinny people were doing this thing, like I could totally see myself getting swept up and becoming like the number one Scientologist. <laughs> Listen, I bought 18 different merit eyeshadows yesterday because i saw them on tiktok i love merit really good yeah really nice very blendable yeah okay 
So I understand being easily influenced and like taken in and you don't have friends and come here and your life will be better. Community. You'll be, you know, dating Tom Cruise. Right. Sure. Sure. But little, something's not right. No. And that was such an interesting part of Stassi Schroeder's first book is that Mm -hmm. her and Jax like almost joined Scientology when they first were living in LA and they were really young. So funny. Imagine Stassi a Scientologist. I truly could see it. I can see it. All right, our She'll next love story. That. She would. <laughs> she would love that. Our next story is uh, Lance Bass related. Were you an NSYNC or a Bar- Backstreet Boys? Fanatic? You know what? I was a Spice Girls yeah. person. Like you supported women in the industry. Yeah, long women it was supporting cool. women. Exactly. What are your thoughts on the the ideology of women supporting women? I feel like women that feel the need to pu- like. I feel like that whole notion and making that your brand in public means you probably don't support women. And are you a woman who unequivocally supports other no. women? Me neither. No. Like, are you a bitch? Are you a Scientologist? Yeah. Like, like th- there are levels. Okay. Yeah. I don't care if you got a vagina or a penis. A hundred percent. This. If blanket, you're an asshole, I don't fuck with you. This blanket requirement to support people because they're women, like that's never going to be me. Because I've met some women and. I always say I ain't marching for you bitches no like I (laughs) I need to know you before I support you I don't just give away support yeah that's ridiculous it's ridiculous like I just want to make sure we're on the same yeah yeah totally today's episode of the toast is brought to you by drizzly drizzly is the go-to app for drink delivery drizzly is the most convenient way to get beer wine and spirits delivered to your doorstep right when you want it one thing about me I love delivery if something's coming to my house That's a joy. That's a gift from God. And we should be thankful. Thank you, Drizzly. Their tailored experience lets you find the perfect drink for the perfect occasion, no matter what it is. You'll save time by shopping a huge selection of drinks from wherever you are. It's also a great way to discover new brands. I find myself like ordering random stuff I've never seen in a store and loving it and finding new brands that I love. So it's also great for gifting. If you're showing up for someone's house uh, for a dinner party and you forgot something, you know, the day of, you can get it delivered and then you look like a really nice house guest, even though you're a thoughtless pig. (laughs) Uh, we uh, love to plan ahead with gift giving and the option on Drizzly where you can schedule ahead a delivery and order ahead is so, so fabulous. So download the Drizzly app today or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com and use code TOAST to receive $5 off or a $0 delivery free off your next order. Must be 21 or older, not valid in all states. Codes cannot be combined with any other offers. Not valid at all retailers. Code expires November 10th, 2023, 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you, Drizzly, for sponsoring today's episode. That's a really exciting new sponsor. I use Drizzly all the time. Big fan of it. In a lot of cities, you can get spritz on Drizzly, which we love. So thank you, Drizzly. Excited to be partnering with Drizzly. Today's episode is also brought to you by The Farmer's Dog. You know, one thing about Jax and I is the the love and care that we put into our Strice Brothers is, is of utmost importance. And I know a lot of you guys feel the same. So when it comes to giving them food, we want the best, right? We want fresh, healthy dog food. And that's what The Farmer's Dog is. They make and deliver fresh, healthy dog food. It's developed by vets. It's nutritionally balanced. And it's made from real healthy ingredients to human food safety standards. It's the best option for dogs at all life stages because it's not kibble. It's not canned goo. It's just real, healthy food. Traditional dry and wet dog food options are highly processed and can use much lower quality ingredients than they claim to. They are extremely difficult to also portion accurately once you switch over to the farmer's dog you will find enormous benefits for your dog's health for me specifically I found that Theo's breath was so much better that was like a a kind of really gross thing that he had but also I knew it wasn't normal his breath is like good dog breath he's making more consistent poops his coat is really shiny he's just got a lot of energy and if you have an older dog you will uh, notice a lot of benefits from switching to fresh healthy dog food at the farmer's dog It doesn't matter if your dog is young or old. It's always the right time to begin investing in their health. They'll help you live a more healthy, happy, and full years together with your Strice Brethren. That means more magical moments with your dog, but no actual, oh my God, am I okay? No actual magic is required. So get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash toast. Plus, you'll get free shipping. Just go to thefarmersdog.com slash toast. That's only uh, free shipping and 50% off your first box when you go to the farmersdog.com slash toast for 50% off your first box and free shipping. So Lance Bass is making news because he was at a football game. They put him on the Jumbotron, whatever the fuck it's called. Okay. And he had a sign. He made a sign. Uh-huh. I guess he made it at home with a piece of paper. A little marker. A little marker. <laughs> and it wrote, uh, not Taylor Swift. So when they put him on the screen, I don't think anybody thought it was going to be Taylor Swift. He held up his homemade sign that said, not Taylor Swift. He workshopped that so hard. Yeah. It's a little like try hard 
it's just it's so sad on so many levels and i would like to deep dive it yeah the preparation the preparation is really where you lose it okay so you like went to a cvs or a Mm -hmm. michael's got a little cardboard thing a sharpie got a sharpie maybe some glitter glue Mm -hmm. i'm not trying to stereotype i'm just saying there was probably some (laughs) glitter glue and then thought what would be funny if they happen to put me on the screen because i'm lance bass right and then he workshopped the joke, mm-hmm. workshopped the bit, probably asked a friend, asked his husband. They co-signed on the sentiment. Then he packed the fucking poster. So true. In like a merce. The level of prep is disarming. And then just waited, looking at the screen, foaming at the mouth to hold up that poster and like really land the plane. Terrible. Yeah, it, it requires too much prep. Had he been on the screen and been like, where's Taylor Swift? Or like mouth sure. something. Sure. Cute sure. And funny. The level of prep is concerning here. Dismal. And it's just like, this is what he wanted, this page six article. And it, and he got it. So I guess that's good. And we're talking about it. I did want to bring it up because I'm dying to know what your thoughts on Taylor Swift in general are. And then yeah. as a, you know, current woman t- in music. Yeah, right. <laughs> but with Travis and everything. But just for, at a glance, what are your thoughts on Taylor Swift? Okay, so I will say that um, I'm a newfound Swifty. <gasps> Love. Probably in the past like couple years, mm-hmm. I've really found um, a deep appreciation for her songwriting mm-hmm. skills. As a songwriter yourself. As a songwriter myself, exactly. And I do think that she is probably the greatest pop star of all time. Love, agree. It's just the truth. It's the truth. And you don't have to love the music or you don't have to love her whole environment, community, whatever. Mm -hmm. You don't have to co-sign on that, but facts are facts. You have to respect it. You have to respect it. Mm -hmm. And she is the greatest to ever do it. Agreed. Did you go to the Eras tour? I did not. Oh, you missed out. I was like in diapers. Yeah. Oh, oh, right. Duh. Sorry. Way more. I was like hemorrhaging, so I couldn't go. Did you go to Beyonce? So you go to a concert. Um, I went to the 1975. Yes, you did. I did. And what were your thoughts when he was dating Taylor very briefly? I liked it. You did? Yes. I understand that um, maybe to the naked eye, he's problematic in nature, but I think that that's intentional and it's actually yes. not straightforward problematic. It's I think a, it's art. I think it's like it's, performance art. It's performance art. Yeah. But he's on the right side of history. I think so. Most of the time. Yeah. And I just think he's very hot. Okay. So like... I'm lost in like a gerbily little way. So that's her aesthetic, like skinny gerbily Brits. And so yeah. now it's so exciting for he's her. He's kind of jacked. No, he's not. I know, but like Travis. Okay. Now, yeah. What are your thoughts? No, no. He looks like someone that puts chips on a sandwich. He definitely does. And like eats like Cheetos and always has you residual don't think he's on hot? the fingers. I do not think he's hot. That might be the hottest take you've ever had. Because I do not think he's hot. Nothing in life is guaranteed, but like Travis. Kelsey being hot is like a guarantee. First of all, let me just like build my case. Yeah, please. He had a reality dating show on the E Network. I just recently rewatched it. Okay. Sahara Vagina. It was amazing. Number two. He did, by the way, in his defense, recently speak on it. He said um, he was a rookie in the NFL. He got paid a lot of money and he was so excited. He ran through all of his money and he had no money. Okay. Do porn. I don't care. Okay. (laughs) That would be better. Do OnlyFans. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't love that. Strike one. Strike two. The facial hair and designer track suits. To me, I, I actually, I hear you. I like it. I think it's like a part of his like goofball vibe. He's like this rich, talented goofball. Okay. He was wearing a red Celine track suit like yes. uh, Jane Lynch from Glee. Very, it's giving Sue Sylvester. <laughs> it was giving Sue Sylvester. And I'm just not in to like that white jock guy. I understand it's re it's like i can just tell he loves a sub sandwich with like and he puts barbecue chips on it no i do want to say like you bringing up sandwiches like i i I get it and i love sandwiches no i know what you mean he definitely like i'll go to a local italian deli and get fucking weird with sandwich he definitely celebrates like five dollar foot long season jimmy john's yeah no i get it i get it but i'm shocked that you don't find him attractive i do not find him attractive at all but you find maddie healy attractive i do you're fucking weird i'm disgusting (laughs) disgusting like (laughs) that makes no fucking sense that's completely backwards i know but there's something about i I don't know i can't describe it okay it's like a raw feral energy no i understand i understand i just i don't know why i just expected you to like hate taylor swift well I, i wasn't in love with taylor swift Probably a few years ago. I was just like, I don't get it. It's overhyped. And then it clicked for me. What particular piece of music was it that did that for you? 
Um, you know, I really love Lover. Mm. I love that wow. song. I feel like not a lot of people became Swifties because of Lover. I think I, in the grand scheme of her discography, it wasn't a flop by any means. By the way, 1989 most, is ridiculously incredible. It's the greatest work of pop. It's the greatest modern pop work of art. I totally agree. And people didn't like Reputation. I fucked with Reputation pretty hard. I liked Reputation. I like everything she does. So yeah. when I like something more, th- Reputation was not my favorite, but by no means did I dislike it. It just wasn't at the top of my list. And then when I was pregnant, I never listened to the 10 minute version oh, of oh. All Too Well. Oh, yeah. And I was going to the Camarillo outlets to a restoration hardware outlet to like look for a discount crib. Mm-hmm. Did what? you find one? No. <laughs> didn't. <laughs> and I put it on and I remember going down the incline and I was crying, just it's, headed to restoration. I mean, what a beautiful moment in time. It's beautiful. <laughs> were you pre- you were pregnant at the time? Oh, yeah. Like, so. And like regretting it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's a tough place to be in. <sighs> yeah. I mean, just thinking about it gets me misty. And then yeah. I was like, why am I trying to be cool and be a contrarian? I think that was what was happening with me. I love that you can own that. I think I, I've it's definitely. True. I've definitely been there with things before where like everybody likes something. So I just immediately dislike it. Yeah. And then I'm only denying myself that pleasure. Right. There's like, a are reason. Popular for a reason. Yeah, right. exactly. That happens to me all the time, like with reading really yeah you read that's adorable i read so much will you send me some books because i need to start reading because it's getting a little up okay here. i'm gonna tell you something that like people who don't read don't realize okay. and it's gonna blow your mind okay a lot of the books that like women our age read uh-huh. and that books that go viral and books that everyone are talking about are literally <laughs> pornography yeah no i'm down so i'll send if you want some it's called smut okay what does that stand for i can never remember it's like sexually manipulating undertext or something i don't know great smut just means like a book is you know a romance novel where people be fucking you know skanky hoes and there are there are smut books that are like some of the most incredible books you've ever read and they also happen to be pornographic send them i have a list okay it's kind of I've gotten a few girls into it and like they come to me for recommendations and and so we start easy the 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 gateway drug to smut is Mm -hmm. this book called it happened one summer okay i do believe it's being made into a movie um Start with that. Okay. And then come to me. And, and tell me you're not a changed woman after you read that book. I like psychological thriller porny. Okay. So you would love a, an author called Frida McFadden. Okay. She herself is a psychologist and she writes short stories for her patients. And she started publishing them on Amazon Kindle. And Great. she became, I don't even know if she's a psychologist anymore. She's the like one of the biggest authors in the world now. Perfect. I and want women short. snapping. Yeah. Oh. Oh my god! Yeah, I feel like a lot of your interests would line up with different book genres. I think so. You should get into reading. I'm gonna start. Start it happened once. One of the world over here. You're seriously, and I think um, Jackie really like always read, but I think with like breastfeeding and like motherhood things, like you have pockets of time where you just like lay and you don't want to be on your phone because the baby's sleeping. Sure, reading is perfect for that. I feel like that's like my new frontier is being someone that reads. No, and then you uh, similar with the Erewhon smoothie, you become morally superior. Right. Can you imagine like, you saw you me get, outside with my child reading, reading a book? Reading. And then the next time like you have someone on your podcast and they don't read, like you can feel better than that person. Like I was reading this book last night. Right. No, and I was. I was reading this book last night. Oh my God. This could be good for me. No, and honestly, it's really, it, it's, it's actually very good for like your mental health. Like just to not be on your phone all the time. Yeah. I still am on my phone all the time. Sure. But just take little breaks. I love that. It's good. So speaking of... um the unwell Mm -hmm. our fifth and final story is about tom sandoval (sighs) jackie where were you during the scandal i know exactly where i was okay i was at health nut in calabasas that's where the kardashians get their salad that's where they get their salad that's a shake yes so i got an iced tea there and then i went to the east coast bagel next door because i was dying for a bagel with lox schmear Mm, i'm starving also pregnant and like you're not supposed to eat lox while you're pregnant I could, I could Try see me, you bitch. not giving a fuck about any of those rules. Didn't give a fuck. I got a lock schmear. I was eating my bagel outside. I got a text message, panic text message. I believe it was from Heather McMahon, actually. Okay. And it was like a 911, just page six yes. screenshot. I was so verklempt yep. that I went to throw away my bagel. Ooh. I threw away my purse. Oh, in a disgusting <laughs> trash can filled with cream what cheese. Kind of a batega. Oh, did you fish it out? Of course I did. did you, okay. I was like, is God it, damn is it. Is the bag okay? It, it's okay. It's okay. a little rough, but it's okay. That's funny. I was just, I was like, I got I to gotta get to my car. I got to get on my phone. I got to yep. call. I got to make calls. Like I was sweating, panicking. Out of sorts. Out of sorts. Picked up the purse, get in the car, start phoning everybody I know with a pulse. I was, I was shaken. Yeah. I was traumatized. That wormy little fuck. It was insane. Ugh. 
so to the point, you know, when you're reading something, I feel like we all experience when you're reading something. I saw it because James posted a screenshot of the page six thing the second it came out. Okay. And being like, what the fuck? He posted it in his feed and I follow him on Instagram. And I was with Jackie and I was like, you know, when you read words and they don't process. Yes. Like, you know what the word says, but you don't know what the word means. Yes. I was like, wait. Tom and, uh, and Ra- affair Cal? with Raquel for nine months or how I was like it was what? just not adding it wasn't making sense it wasn't computing for me no so now in all this has happened I'm sure you know Tom Sandoval is on this FX show that actually a lot of people really like it's called Special Forces yes where they take like it's kind of like I'm a celebrity get me out of here Beverly Mitchell was on it she was on Special Forces or I'm a celebrity get me out of here I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I think Special Forces. Almost Somebody Get Me Out of Here was like the original version where they like took a bunch of reality stars, Heidi and Spencer were on it, and they mm. threw them in the woods and gave them like nothing to survive. <laughs> so funny. And so um, it's this show where reality stars and different people, JoJo Siwa was on it, they go through like army training, like the like SEAL Team 6. Like how far could you make it? Yeah. Going through like the worst of the worst army training. And Tom Sandoval is on it. And obviously everyone's talking about that, but they're talking about a particular moment from this week's episode where he's crying while taking a dump. <laughs> I mean, nothing makes more sense. <laughs> the Vanderpump Rule star recovers from an emotional challenge in Monday's episode by crying while pooping. He said, dude, that was so intense, man. He says in page six exclusive preview while seated in an outhouse, knowing that his castmate Bode Miller is standing nearby to listen. He said, I'm laughing and crying at the same time while trying to shit. I feel so defeated out there. While the nature of the challenge is unknown, the Alpine ski racer consoles the Bravo Liberty by saying that such a reaction was the whole point of it. So he lets the camera in. Here, I'll give you a visual. He's quite literally screaming, crying, sweating, throwing up on the toilet. Disgusting. So he lets the camera into the outhouse and has this kind of breakdown on camera while shitting. And I'd love to get your take on that, Jackie. Um, Is your full name Jacqueline? Yes. Okay. It is. How's it spelled? Uh, J-A-C-L-Y-N. Okay. I would just like to go on record and say that I think Tom Sandoval is the biggest pussy roaming the Western Hemisphere. And I want to be very clear that pussy is not derogatory towards women. It's not. I don't know it is uh, derived from pussinamalis, which means cowardly. The more you know. She is that reads. Latin? I don't know. Did you just make that up? I might have, but oh, I don't think so. I feel like I researched right. this drunk one night when someone yeah. was like, don't call men pussies because Ugh. that's rude to our gender. And I'm like, I will tear your ass up. Yeah. No. I'll tear your pussy up. I will tear your pussy up. Okay. <laughs> Mine's been torn up. Yours is about to get torn oh, up. How are you healing? Pretty good. Okay, good. Pretty good. Yes. Yeah, for real. Yes. I was like out of diapers in a week and a half. Look at you. I put a thong on. Okay. I, week two. I've never had a child and I still refuse to put a it thong was a, on. It was a bad decision. That That's brave. It was a bad decision. Almost as brave as Tom Sandoval. So brave shitting on the toilet. So I, I feel like we've, him. we've definitely hit a point. Because mm-hmm. I think Tom Sandoval hasn't always will be like a very thirsty person and do anything for fame. But there was probably a point in his life where he wouldn't have considered, you know, being filmed while taking a shit. But I think yeah. things are so dire for him. He needs, you know, the world's back on his side that he agreed to do this. It's it's a sign. He's just, he's such an interesting character because on one hand, he's so vulnerable and open and altruistic Whatever. and, you know, giving and loving and artsy. But he's also the dumbest person on television. Yeah. Like he is, we could spin it and repackage it in any way that, you know. We see fit. That we see fit. But he's a dumb fuck. Yeah. He's a wormy dumb fuck and I do not like him. No, I don't think that's a crazy thing to say. I do not like him either. And I actually feel like now that we're out of it, it, it emotions were so heightened when we were all going through Scandal and watching the show and everything on social media. And now that we're out of it, I I do feel still like this deep hatred for Tom Sandoval. But I feel this immense sadness for Raquel. Me too. I think of her as like a victim in all of this. I do too. Even though she was like the perpetrator. Absolutely. But the beating that she took. Yeah. Un, it was unfair from everyone from everybody they should all be minorly yeah. ashamed of themselves i agree like they took it too far towards the end it was way too far it was uncomfortable to watch they were basically telling her at the reunion like to kill herself exactly she, you're a worthless human being nobody here likes you're you ugly yeah like just the worst things you, you can no say friends. to someone disgusting so and she's not was not able to benefit from this major scandal whatsoever like tom sandoval is on this show he has a podcast and he's doing a lot of things i believe he was just also on the masked singer oh god ariana of course is the media darling of the universe she right has every brand 
Duracell, Bloomingdale's, everything. And Raquel is just at this facility and trying to keep her mental sanity in check. Obviously, what she did is wrong. Wrong and, you know, morally not in line. However, the punishment that she had to endure did not fit, it, uh, fit, fit the, crime. the crime. I completely agree. Yeah, it was hard to watch. Yeah, so now I look back on the scan of all time with like just kind of this like eerie sadness. I know, it feels like dark and haunting. Yeah, it's not fun. It, it's not fun. It was like kind of fun when we were in it, and now it's like, damn. No, because there was it was at someone's expense. Exactly. And we're not, good people. And not the person who deserved it, in my opinion. No, totally agree. Jackie Schimmel, you absolutely crushed the Fast Five stories. I did? I absolutely loved podcasting with you. I Me can't too. wait to do it again. Me too. And if anybody liked what they heard here, check out the Bitch Bible. Also, can you please bring back Mind, Body, No Soul? <sighs> my god the little engine that couldn't it was it's my best work so that was like a meditative podcast of course in an ironic it Jackie a, Schimmel way yeah satirical guided meditations the uh, title was incredible <sighs> mind body no soul I just burnt out too quickly I, I bit off more than I could chew I like that it exists that we can Me always too. go back to it and yeah. reference it and it's kind of funny that it was a flop N was it um kind of it's so important Viola Davis said like you have to flop Oh, I'm in my flop era right now. You have to flop because mm -hmm. you can't thrive unless you've flopped. And you'll never know when you're doing well if you don't know when, when you've done bad. Yeah, I'm flipping and flopping all over the place. I like it. It feels like good. It it's refreshing. So weekly podcast. Did you take any time off from your podcast after birth? No. A woman in business. I didn't. I pre-recorded. So That's I wasn't putting out live episodes. But I think I only pre-recorded for two weeks and I was back on it that's insane yeah it's like therapy you know it's yeah, fun of course. so check out the bitch bible follow Jackie on Instagram for all her motherhood things it's not it's not your regular motherhood content no it is not there's a lot of crying not for the easily offended not for the easily offended I think that should be today's <laughs> episode title disclaimer yeah thank you so much for being here thank you and thank you everyone for listening to the Toast and Monday Morning Show where we deliver the past five stories you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube so if you're watching this on YouTube please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up we're also available as a podcast anywhere podcasts can be found so Spotify, Tune Stitcher, Public Radio, Iowa, Radio, Box. All the places where you listen to podcasts, find us at Toast, leave a five-star review about how beautiful, stunning, and wickedly talented we are. Hope you have an amazing day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. That was very impressive. Thank you.